All right, so I think it was two years ago, right after the Sony A1 was announced that I basically declared the Sony A9 series to be completely dead in my eyes. So I'll be honest, this really kind of felt to me like an A9 III, and that's not a bad thing at all, but uh, because it has that same stack CMOS sensor, it's virtually in the same body style, it has some improvements, but most of them are due to just the new sensor and the new processor that Sony is putting in all of their cameras. I mean, the A1, this A1 is just so impressive Somehow Sony managed to throw in a 50 megapixel sensor and still pull off 30 frames per second and 4K 120 with 8K video. Uh, suddenly the main advantages of having these lower resolution sensors, which was like speed and things like that, they were gone. I mean, why even make a low resolution camera if everything that you ever want can be done with a high resolution one? Plus, Sony decided to basically go with the A9 body style, which in my opinion was a mistake because to me, the A1 really just felt like an A9 III, but Sony decided it was so good due to these processor improvements that they would just call it something different. The A1, they would throw it up against flagship cameras from Canon and Nikon and slap another three grand on the price. And honestly, two years later, I still think that's true, but the A1 is still leading. I mean, no one else can shoot 50 megapixel raw files at 30 frames per second with some of the best autofocus performance, and it has some of the best resolutions and frame rates of any camera when it comes to video. But the last few months, something has happened that has left a major gap in the Sony lineup. And all of a sudden, I think the A9 III might just be the best camera ever made. So really things changed when the Sony a7R5 and the a7R4 were announced. And that's what got me thinking. So the a7 IV, it's an absolutely awesome camera, but it has a major problem when it comes to speed. It's got some slower photo and video frame rates. So on the still side, the camera still tops out at like six to seven frames per second with 14 bit raw. You can get 10 frames per second, but you do have to go down to 12 bit raw. And the buffer on that camera doesn't hold as many shots in a burst mode, which if you're shooting like sports and wildlife, that could be an issue. And even weddings, it can really slow you down because in weddings I shoot dual RAW and because the camera only has one CF Express card slot, dual RAW requires one card to be the slower SD card and it can take a long time before that buffer frees up. And the Sony a7R5 has some massive improvements with autofocus and hardware, but the resolution is just so high that again, video and fast shooting are really gonna take a hit. You still can't shoot 4K 60 full frame, which is something that I use a ton, and you still can't get more than six to seven frames per second without losing quality even on the a7R5. Even worse, electronic shutter, which on most cameras allows faster shooting, it does absolutely nothing on those cameras to speed up frame rates. And honestly, the readout speeds in those cameras are a little slow. So you probably shouldn't use it anyway for moving subjects. So enter my dream camera, the Sony a9 III, and here will be the specs. Pull the body directly from the a7R5. Like seriously, don't touch anything. That hardware is great. You get that dual flip tilt screen. And if there is a camera that deserves a hardware upgrade, it is definitely gonna be this, the A1. It definitely needs some big hardware upgrades to it. So save it for that camera. Although I have one very small but very major request, Sony. So please, for the love of God, put a decent screen on the back of your camera. You're freaking Sony, you're a massive display company and you have one of the worst looking displays of any camera system. So please, I mean, the, the resolution is okay, but the actual panel quality on Sony's cameras is really bad, like so bad, I don't even like showing people the back of my screen. But that is my only hardware request, I promise. Or at least it's the only thing I want added. There is something I want subtracted. And this would be the biggest change I would want for this camera. So no shutter, seriously, just get rid of it completely. Nikon got rid of it with the Z9 and I absolutely don't care. The A9 series already uses a stacked CMOS sensor and if readout speeds are improved even a little bit, 
you just don't need a mechanical shutter anymore. You can keep the mechanical shutter on the A1 series where it might matter a little bit more. This should help save some money. It'll hopefully free up some space inside the camera for better airflow. Maybe the IBIS system gets a little bit more room, but I don't think we need a mechanical shutter on this camera. And for the sensor, it honestly could just be the same 24 megapixel stacked CMOS sensor we had with the original A92. I'd love to see an upgrade. It's been a long time since we've seen sensor quality improvements on pretty much every camera. But even if it was the same resolution with better performance, you have the A1 now, you have the A7R5. So if you need more resolution, you have options. And with that lower resolution, I really think Sony could pull off 40 frames per second in electronic shutter and faster readout speeds with virtually no rolling shutter. Nikon can already do 20 frames per second at 50 megapixels. And so going half of the resolution and double the frame rate, I really think that would be doable. I'd be okay with 30, but I think with a lower resolution, Sony can pull off 40 frames per second. And now the buffer would be insane because you're gonna be moving way less data with a smaller resolution than the Sony A1. So you could still get some decent performance even when using UHS-2 SD cards. Although with dual CF Express card slots, which the A7R5 has, you would never fill up this buffer. It would last a long time. On the A1 with 50 megapixels, you basically have to go with those insanely expensive CF Express cards to get any decent buffer performance on that camera. But with a lower resolution A9 III, those SD cards might be more of an option. And if you throw in the CF Express cards, it'll just be insane. Now on the video side, Sony has made some massive improvements recently. So I really just want everything already in the A7R5. It'll be 10 bits, it'll have the new eight stop IBIS system, all the new features like focus breathing compensation, that new flip screen is gonna be awesome. As far as like frame rates and resolutions though, it is time for 6K and ideally 6K 60. I mean, even a $2,000 Panasonic camera, which uses old sensor technology, most likely from the A7 III, that pulls off 6K 30. So 6K 60 is absolutely possible. I mean, the Nikon Z9 can actually do 8K 60 with ProRes and RAW. So this isn't actually that big of a thing. And I'd love to see us get 4K 120, which I think that they can, even if 4K 120 is a crop mode, but really my biggest thing is that we need full frame, 60 frames per second, ideally at the full 6K full sensor resolution. That would make it better than an A7R5 and the A7 IV, both of which are cropped at 60 frames per second. And honestly, I don't really think that we need a whole lot of other improvements. I mean, autofocus on the A7R5, it's already amazing. I think this would free Sony up to, to do things a little bit different with this A1. So with an A93 in existence, maybe with the A1 series, they can separate a little bit further. So change up the hardware, make it a little bigger, maybe focus a bit more on ergonomics, weatherizing it a bit more, knowing that there would be a cheaper a9 III for people who don't need the highest resolution or hardware. So unfortunately, the A9 II is already a very expensive camera and the A9 III would probably have to be even more money. I think like 4,500 to 4,800 would be the sweet spot. And if they remove that shutter mechanism, then that should help keep costs low and maybe they can go to the low end of that one. However, the current A9 II, that's still $4,500, which is way too expensive. Like I can't believe Sony's even moving cameras at that price. I don't think they want to, but even at that price, there's still a big difference between the A1, which is even more overpriced at $6,500. So an A9 III would still be very compelling. It would have the lower resolution, but it would come with higher video frame rates. It would come with higher photo frame rates. Uh, it would have electronic shutter that's doing really well on this camera. It would have better buffer performance, smaller file sizes. So you could use just SD cards if you wanted to. And I think all of this is realistic. It's tech that already exists. It's not just like my dream camera specs. But let me know what you guys think the A9 III should be, or if you think the camera is even going to be made. Like I said a couple years ago, I didn't think the A9 III would even exist, so we'll have to see if anything comes out. In the meantime, I'm actually working on an updated review of the A1, which should be out shortly, so subscribe, like, appreciate all of that, guys. Let me know if there's any specific side-by-sides you guys want to see for that A1 review as well.